I am Yinhua and I'm a journalist from Lock Asia and I'm here today at the Hobby Branding Global Press Conference and with me here today is Charlie Sai, the Chief Strategy Officer from Hobby Group. And so June is a time of a very exciting time, it's a very busy time for Hobby Group. So I'm here to catch up with Charlie and see what he's up to. So Charlie, congrats on the new logo. So how do you feel about the new Hobby brand? We feel very excited to have this opportunity. Uh, in Singapore, which is our headquarter, global headquarter, to uh, announce this new branding. Mm. Um, a new branding, new, new life, and new opportunity. Okay. And we take this opportunity to, to let the world know our new future. Yes. Oh, that's great. And like Hobby is definitely, like everyone's definitely very excited about Hobby at this point in time because the value of the Hobby token is absolutely flying at the moment. So, um, how do you feel about that? Well, we actually, as a company, um, our strategy or our value is we're looking at the, the Hobby company's value. Uh, we know that regardless the fluctuation of the market price, it will finally go to the value of the company. So we will try our best to do to, to do this to this industry and to this company and the market price we will finally catch up. So that's that's we, we are not looking at the daily price. This is not something we don't look at very oh, often. Okay, yeah. sure. And also like Hobby just launched a cryptocurrency back exchange traded fund, the yes. HB10. Yes. So like can you tell us more about it and tell us about the reasons behind its launch? Yeah, um, as you know that the crypto industry is growing very fast. Yeah. And more and more regular investors they want to get into this industry, but they don't have the enough uh, expertise to choose which currency, which cryptocurrency is fit for, for the investors' need. Um, and that's why ETF will take the, will, will satisfy the requirement. It, it composed of the 10 currencies, or 10 uh, cryptocurrencies that we choose. Um, so when you invest on that, it means you invest on the whole, pretty much the whole industry. Um, and, and, and it will, it will suit a lot of people's needs, especially the institutional investor. Um, and, and that's the main reason we want to have the ETF. Oh, and a lot of people are actually trying to set up a similar ETF like the Winklevoss brothers, mm -hmm. but they are not succeeding at it due to like regulations. Mm -hmm. So did Hobby like face any regulatory hurdles when you guys are doing this? Well, I, I think I think it's different, right? So so it, it's, it's a different. Um, um, I would say it's a different country, different regulations. I would only say that we are not expanding the ETF right now to the US and that's that's why we don't we don't have this regulation others right now. Oh okay that's great. So in Singapore everything's going pretty smoothly so MAS is pretty happy about it? Well um we are we, we, we don't have I, I will I will try to avoid this question oh, okay, <laughs> but, but we, we were having the, the different uh, oh. um, um, applying licenses process right now. Yes. Oh okay sure and I also like to ask you about um, how Hobby Group is expanding because you guys are expanding really quickly and like yes. to Australia, to London and like you guys are also applying for a license in Canada. Yes. So um, how did Hobby do this? In, um, um, for, for, the, for the global expansion that we are, uh, we are doing so far so good. Um, actually it's very fast right now. Yeah, We're expanding to, to not only the countries you just mentioned but also Australia. Um, we also expand into Korea, Japan, um, and then um, in Brazil, um, and uh, Canada. You already mentioned, um, and then we, we, every every country we enter, we want to strictly follow the regulations. Um, different countries have different policies on that, and that's, that will, that might slow down the process. But we will we will stick to our principle: is we want to be the the fully compliant regulated exchange in in every country. Mm, that's great. And can you talk to us more about maybe some of the challenges that Hobby has overcome in this process? Like maybe are there some cultural gaps or are there some oh, regulations? Right. So I think I think that the most challenging uh, is not a cultural gap. Cultural gap we already realized in the beginning. We know that different countries have different cultures. Um, we, we know that the, the, the it's it's a different policy and different regulation. But I think the most challenging things is to hire the right people in locally. Um, since you have the right people, then they can solve the culture gap. They can they can overcome the, the regulation. Uh, they can follow the the, the, the compliant policy there. And the most challenging things is to find the right people in the local in local country. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's great. And so we all we also like to find out more about Charlie's background. So Charlie, can you tell us what do you do before you join Hobby? 
Well, before John Kobe, I was the columnist, um, writing all this columnist, uh, columnist writing oh, all these financial cool. fintech articles. Um, um, and and that's just like me. Yes, <laughs> you right in China, yeah. in China. Okay. Um, so um, I was I was um, I was a columnist in fintech area, mm -hmm. uh, writing all the articles, and I will study. Um, blockchain industry very very early back to mm -hmm. 2013 when I was in uh, when I was in the Deutsche Bank I was I was coming from the traditional chi traditional financial industry um, mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 study the blockchain industry pretty early um, and that's and uh, at the moment I I, I look into it uh, the moment I feel this is going to change the world I think this is okay. a huge impact on the financial industry. Um, um, that's why I want to choose the, the will be as as the career. That's great. So you're in blockchain since 2013, and so where do you see the blockchain industry in 10 years time? I would say 10 years probably is a very long time in this mm -hmm. industry. We probably don't know in the 10 wow. years. We we can I can only say that uh, in the near future, maybe in the two or three years time, um, the, the blockchain will change the, the people see the value. The, how the value is formed, how the value is transferred, how the value is exchanged um, since the technology of blockchain um, not only like, like apply to our exchange, apply to the, the, the currency, but also apply to the relationship, the trust the relationship with people. So I think this is significant change, significant impact on our, and not only the financial world, but also on our society. Okay, yeah. that's great. Thanks so okay. much, Charlie. Thank you so much. Thank you.